I'm Cassandra, and today I'll be talking about the uses of principal component analysis, which is also known as PCA. This video is an extension of another project that Dan and I completed last semester. In last semester's video, we explained the details of how PCA works. I recommend referencing that video, which should be linked to this one, to get a comprehensive overview of the math behind PCA. I will not be delving into the nitty gritty of how PCA works in this tutorial. In a nutshell, PCA is a versatile data analysis tool that can be used to extract meaningful information from complex data sets. It is typically conducted to dimensionally reduce input data by finding linear combinations of variables that correspond to the principal components. A dimensionally reduced data set can then be utilized for regression and visualization, like creating 2D and 3D scatter plots. Both of these applications will be covered in this video. I will be going through a Jupyter notebook I created to analyze the MTCARS data set. The data was collected during road tests by Motor Trend magazine in 1974 and consists of 11 variables quantifying various aspects of 32 automobiles. This, this data set is widely used to understand PCA. Let's begin. So as usual, we first have to import a bunch of Python libraries. The main ones that I want to point out include sklearn, numpy, and matplotlib. Then we want to read in our empty cars data as a data frame. The CSV file contains a column of model numbers, model names, that we don't want to include when running PCA since it isn't quantitative data. So we'll remove it. Here is the current data table. The next cell walks the next cell walks through the process of running PCA from scratch. We'll be using the sklearn PCA library, which is, which is performed with the following lines of code. The PCA fit transform function generates a matrix of scores Z, which contains the transformed data using the principal components as the new variables. Scale X refers to standardization and involves centering x by subtracting the mean and then dividing by the standard deviation. Here is the first column of z matched with the model names. This cell prints out the eigenvalues, proportions of variance explained, cumulative proportions explained, and the matrix B with the principal components as its columns. So this first column is the values of the first principal component. Here's a graph that shows the non-cumulative and cumulative proportions of variance explained by the principal components. The red bars represent the variance of each principal component while the scatter plot line is cumulative. We can see that the first three principal components explain 90% of the information present in the original 11 variables. Next, we will dimensionally reduce the data by just keeping the first three columns of Z, and then plot the values in a 3D scatter plot. We can use cluster analysis tools, such as k-means clustering, which is done in this cell, in order to see which cars are more similar to each other. With four clusters, we get distinct groups, as shown here. So there's the yellow group, the purple group, the blue group, and the green group. The bigger gray circles correspond to the centroids of the clusters. The green cluster, as an example, contains the cars Ford, Pantera, Maserati, and Ferrari, which forms a high-end, high-performance sports car group. Now we're going to use PCA to improve multiple linear regression which is known as principal component regression, or PCR. PCR is useful because it dampens the effect of multicollinearity, which occurs when independent variables are correlated with each other. Our dependent variable that we will be predicting is horsepower. 
So first, we'll take out the dependent variable from the data set with this drop command, and then run PCA on the new data set, producing another score matrix. Then we'll perform five-fold cross-validation to see what number of principal components result in the lowest mean squared error. Five-fold cross-validation involves splitting a data set into five subsets, which is done in this line, which will be used to train and test a linear regression model, which is initiated in this line. The main function to point out is cross-val score, which conducts the training and tests and returns an array of scores from each run. Our goal is to create a plot of average MSE value against the number of principal components, as seen here. From this graph, we can see that the smallest cross-validation error occurs when only two principal components are used. Using this information, we can apply PCR to our actual training and test data. We'll begin by splitting the data set into training and test subsets, and then conduct PCA on the training data to produce a score matrix as usual. We then dimensionally reduce the training data using the first two principal components and also reduce the test data using the same two principal components. Next, we try to fit the linear regression model on our reduced training data, which is done in this slide. Once we have a model, we can use it to predict values from our reduced test data, which is done with this prediction function. Here is a list of predictions. Let's run it first. Here's a list of predictions and expected values with a mean squared error of 1001. 1001 seems like a lot, but it's actually much smaller than 10,183, which is what we would obtain if we did ordinary multiple linear regression. So using PCA does help with ordinary uh, multiple linear regression. To conclude this tutorial, PCA is a very powerful data analysis tool that can be used to dimensionally reduce a data set, visualize clusters, and improve multiple linear regression. Thank you very much.